So digging around the internet, it seems like no one's talking about the PS5's launch lineup. Sure, people are covering the full list of revealed games, but what exactly can you play on PS5 on day one? Well, here we go. Number one, Astro's Playroom, a somewhat follow-up to the critically acclaimed VR game, Astrobot Rescue Mission. It was shown off during the June 11th PS5 event. While the event didn't really reveal this, but it'll actually be a pack-in title for anyone that buys a PS5. It's said to be a cute 3D platformer that takes advantage of the DualSense haptic feedback as players explore worlds that showcase what the PS5 is capable of. Sure, it's not in VR, which is a good majority of what made Astrobot Rescue Mission so great, but given how the team has done some really creative things with VR, I'm excited to see what they accomplish with the new DualSense controller and the new features of the PS5. Next up, NBA 2K21. 2K Games confirmed that the next NBA 2K game will be on PS5 this fall. The description of the reveal teases that NBA 2K21 is built from the ground up for PS5. Get ready for next-gen graphics, load times, and power. So if you enjoy sports games and that kind of thing, it's good to know that NBA 2K21 will be available for you when the console releases. Moving on, we got Destiny 2 Beyond Light. On June 9th, Bungie revealed the Destiny 2 Beyond Light expansion, which will start the next era of live support for the sci-fi shooter. During that presentation, Bungie also confirmed that Destiny 2 will be coming to PS5 this fall. The PS5 version of Destiny 2 will be free for anyone that owns it on PS4, and all progress will carry over. Crossplay between PS4 and PS5 is also in the pipeline. This is a huge win for Bungie, making the switch to the new console easy and stress-free for as many people as possible. I'm also hoping that we see at least a small jump forward in terms of graphics, maybe a HD remaster type situation, and a reduction of those horrid load screens with the new SSD. So next up is the one that pretty much everyone's excited for, and that's Spider-Man Miles Morales. A new Spider-Man game starring Miles Morales will also be on PS5 right at launch. Well, kind of a new Spider-Man game. Sony told The Telegraph following the game's announcement on June 11th that this game is an expansion and enhancement to the previous game. We currently don't know if the game will be sold at full price. They said there's a substantial Miles Morales component, which is the expansion element, but also within the game as well, there's been major enhancements to the game and the game engine, obviously deploying some of the major PlayStation 5 technology and features. They went on to clarify. This is more similar to the Uncharted Lost Legacy spinoff, which was a smaller title using the same game engine with a shorter story, and I'm expecting this to be the same way, and I honestly don't think it'll be full price. Probably more like $40 like Lost Legacy was. But even way before the official PS5 reveal, Sony has been using Spider-Man as a showcase for how much faster and prettier the PS5 looks compared to PS4. Because during a demonstration earlier this year, Footage was presented by Sony comparing Spider-Man PS4 running on both the current gen system and PS5. On the PS4 Pro, Sony revealed that Spider-Man PS4 takes 8.10 seconds to load up, whereas on the PS5, the loading time is only 0.8 seconds. That's a huge jump. So next up is Deathloop. During the June 11th PS5 reveal event as well, we learned that Deathloop will be launching this holiday as a timed PS5 exclusive, as well as on PC. This is the latest game from Arcane Studios, who are known best for the Dishonored games, and it's published by Bethesda. This exclusive is a first-person shooter with a lot of player choice that follows a man named Colt as he is stuck in a time loop while trying to take out eight different targets. Meanwhile, players can also control Juliana, an assassin who's trying to take Colt down. Arcane is touting the utilization of PS5's graphic capability to bring their artistic vision to life like never before possible on console. They also highlight the use of the new haptic feedback and adaptive triggers of the DualSense controller. Next is Dirt 5. Racing games are pretty synonymous with console launches, and Dirt 5 from Codemasters is continuing that trend. It will be on next-gen systems right at launch, using the additional power to bring back local 4-player split-screen racing. It'll also feature a more in-depth career mode that stars famous voice actors like Troy Baker and Nolan North. So if you're a fan of racing games, this is currently the next-gen launch title that you're going to be looking forward to the most. Then we've got Observer System Redux. At the start of every gaming generation, we typically get our fair share of remasters that take advantage of the improved hardware to enhance older games. Bloober Team is doing this with its 2017 cyberpunk horror game, Observer, which it plans to release on next-gen consoles later this year, as Observer System Redux. So far, Bloober Team has confirmed that the PS5 version of Observer will have a new story and gameplay content when compared to the original. 
as CD Projekt Red has confirmed that the next-gen version of Cyberpunk 2077 is not going to be there at launch, Observer will be the best way to scratch that cyberpunk itch on next-gen consoles. Then we've got Jet the Far Shore. Jet the Far Shore is a sci-fi PS5 launch window indie game by indie developer Super Brothers. It follows someone named May who is in search of a sanctuary for the human race who are nearing extinction. Players will explore the new planet on high-speed flying aircraft as she discovers interesting places and creatures and fights enemies. On the PlayStation blog, the developers tease that the game will take advantage of the PS5's 3D audio capabilities as well as the DualSense's haptic feedback. Then next up is Bugsnacks. Bugsnacks was probably the weirdest game shown off at the PS5 reveal event. As from the creators of Octodad, this indie game takes place on Snacktooth Island, where the titular food insect hybrids live. The game's PlayStation blog post clarifies that this will be a first-person adventure game, and that it's a cross-generation title with PS4, and that it will take advantage of the DualSense's haptic feedback. And this really reminds me of when Viva Pinata was a launch game with Xbox 360. Weird times. The next is Rainbow Six Siege. A port of the popular tactical multiplayer shooter Rainbow Six Siege is the only video game currently confirmed as a launch title by its developer. During an interview with Windows Central in February, Rainbow Six Siege director Leroy Athanasoff stated, What I can tell you is that we are going to be on next-gen consoles from launch. Our target is to be available right at launch. He couldn't share a specific date, but confirmed that Rainbow Six Siege will be on PS5 whenever its release date does roll around. And then there's Godfall. Godfall is a new hack-and-slash loot-focused fantasy game from Counterplay Games and Borderlands 3 developer Gearbox. It was revealed for PC and PS5 at the Game Awards in 2019 in December, making it the first brand new PS5 IP to be officially revealed. And while it hasn't technically been confirmed as a launch title, it does have a release window of holiday 2020, just like the PS5, so it seems likely that it's going to be on launch. And then finally, we've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The next game in the Assassin's Creed series rounds out Ubisoft's lineup for the launch of the PS5 and brings the franchise into the era of Vikings. With a large open world and a focus on exciting raids and powers, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will definitely be helped out by the additional power of the PS5. Despite that, Ubisoft has not detailed what the exact enhancements will be, but the game has a holiday 2020 window and it's safe to assume Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be on launch when PS5 launches. So obviously there's a bunch more games that are coming down the pipeline like early 2021 and late 2020, but I wanted just to get the games that are only launch titles. The so games that you can pick up and play on day one as soon as you get your shiny new PS5. But which of these games are you most excited for? Let me know in the comments below. But thanks for watching guys and we will catch up next time.